you know, it's just been a kind of the, what do you call it, the, the, the privilege of my life. I don't know, I've been very lucky because it's, it's a wonderful community and it stretches to everywhere in the world, <laughs> including right where you are, which is awesome. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I sort of, I've fallen in love with the game community, the developer community around the world that used to, well, we tried to make one game. Actually, we kind of sucked at making games, but it was one kind of okay game. It sold like 2,000 copies, which actually in that world was kind of not that small a number, but of course in the modern world of smartphones it's like basically zero. But uh, this is before the smartphone. So, so, so we lived the life of indie developers, game developers, and, and sort of felt the pain of that. It's really hard to make games, as you're about to find out. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, I, th I think it's just really... You know, it's very good training for many different things to make games. Of course, you know, making games is good training to make games, but it's also good training for all, for all kinds of other programming and product design, user experience design, and so on. Uh, because at the end, you know, product games are almost the, the purest sort of, you know, ex pure experience. There's nothing else, right? So I think uh, I think it's a really health healthy exercise. So I'm I'm really you know glad that that people go through that. Some of you will hopefully make games for a living. And many of the rest of you will do other interesting things in your lives. Um, you know, the ones that will spend time in the game industry in some way, or at least you know, uh, be around the game industry, um, you'll find out that it's full of really smart, really kind, and very creative people, um, which is kind of unique. You know, not all game industries combine these things that well. Um, so I hope you'll get the pleasure of that, and of course, give back to that. Um, you know, uh, it's been 14 years since we sat in a basement in uh, Nuremberg, which is a kind of a, a, an area of Copenhagen that is, uh, it has a lot of immigrants from all over, all over the world. So a lot of different people, including from uh, from Arabic uh, countries. And, uh, you know, so I would always eat shawarma. Um, <laughs> uh, it, was the, it was the cheapest and, and, and kind of healthy food you could get. So I, I really <laughs> enjoyed that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, like it's it's just crazy, you know. Building building software, building companies is fun. So again, I hope many of some of you will do that as well. Um, How did you get into the video game industry? <laughs> just like that, you know. We just wanted to make a game, so we sat down. Unity didn't exist, so we had to create Unity, right? So we, we made Unity for ourselves, and then we decided that we were not that good at game, making games, but we were really passionate about the industry. And Unity was not a very good product back then. It was very bad, actually, but but it had some good elements, and it was easy to use. So, so the idea was, you know, what if we three guys in a basement in Copenhagen, um, you know, give this to everyone in the world? What might they create? You know, maybe they'll be better at making games than we were uh, are. So, you know, then we created this slogan: democratize the game development, uh, where the idea is, you know, let's make it so that more people can do this. Uh, you know, they could be, you know, we help them be successful um, because you. You're too young to remember. This is like when you were being born, but <laughs> roughly. But you know, back then, game technology was really expensive. If you wanted to make uh, games, you had to have like a hundred thousand dollars, several hundred thousand dollars. You had to call some guys that you know probably wouldn't talk to you if you were not like clearly kind of an established company. Um, or there was some really bad kind of open source stuff. A lot of respect for open source, but this was not very good. So, so. Uh, so um, so we decided, like, what happens if this becomes quite cheap? And, you know, in the, initially it was not free. Initially it was uh, what, what might be called sort of cheapium, so cheap and cheaper. Um, and um, after launching and having some success with that, we decided to go fully free and, and, you know, make it so that everyone in the world who can get a computer, which is not everyone, but everyone who could get, could get a computer could get Unity. And, and you know, we've been struggling with, Distributed Unity to kind of people uh, over several years, and we've got like 13,000, 13,000 people to, to try Unity, and then we made it free, and the day after it had doubled. <laughs> so, it, it, uh, you know, in, in 24 hours we did the same as we did in uh, four years, um, and, and now it's like millions of people who have tried Unity, and, and, and many of them are, have gone on to create careers, you know, live in all kinds of all kinds of parts of the world, create companies, create businesses, create wonderful products, make art, uh, and so on. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really exciting. As uh, many other co-founders in this space, you probably had 
one or several moments where you were struggling with your product, where you were struggling with Unity back in days. What are like specific moments that almost made you quit, but you overcome those <laughs> issues and continue with Unity? Yeah, you know, we were lucky that we had, I had really uh, like we were great co-founders. We were, you know, we stayed friends almost always, not always, but we stayed friends. Uh, you know, we 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 were different, very different in personality, but sort of similar in skill and 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 we were sort of brave. You know, we we just 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 did whatever it took, and we had we didn't were not picky. You know, if I had to, you know, bicycle to a computer store to buy a new piece of hardware because something broke, you know, I did that. Um, you know, I would write press releases or just chat with customers every night over over um, you know some messenger Skype or something, um, whatever it took. Right, so. That was the lucky part. I mean, the unlucky part was it was a very small industry, or like not small industry. How to say? The, the the engine business was never a good business. So, so one 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 day I realized that you know the most successful kind of game engine company had had been actually really small, and I was like, oh my god. So I guess that's the best we can do. Uh, but we were always very ambitious, and we just never gave up. And uh, and because we, we felt there was a point to this, like we were not just doing this for ourselves. We we're not just Making one game, we would try to do something that would kind of, you know, have a broad appeal uh, and enable people to do things they couldn't otherwise do. Um, and you know, with thousands of games made with Unity launching every month, um, that's definitely become true. And, and you know, really wonderful people around the world uh, using Unity for all kinds of things, uh, including, of course, as I probably don't have to tell you, for product visualization, training, simulation, all kinds of non-game uses as well, uh, which we also get excited by. Um, yeah, you know, some of the toughest moments were just not being able to pay salaries, like when we couldn't actually afford to pay people on the first of the month. Um, that happened quite a lot in the early days. But it didn't make you quit, which is the No, and, 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 and like, of course, you know, the key to that, like, you know, when you can't pay people on the first, that's exactly enough when you quit, that's when you fight harder, right? So, so we had to do that, yeah. You, you probably hear the question quite often, but how, how is it to be? Uh, one of the founding fathers of game engines, and then to be such a successful person in the video game industry. Ah, uh, I don't it know what to be you David <laughs> You know, you just, you know, I mean, I was lucky to be working with really smart people, and we hired some really smart people. And I don't know, like you know, I I get embarrassed. Um, no, I'm, I'm really proud of the work we did together, and we are still doing together. I'm really proud of you know putting this engine out there and really focusing on the sort of old principles of you know trying to democratize game development and just make the industry a little bit better. Um, you know, I spent most of my time either on Unity or helping other entrepreneurs, so I give advice to really smart people and, and try to sort of bring them further. Um, and then I try to get spend some time with my kids, which I never did before. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a simple <laughs> life, you know. I just I bicycle, I bicycle around Copenhagen and try to help people by Skype or bicycle. I mean, as you know, we we are here with a bunch of between 14 and probably 16, 17 year old kids, high school kids here in Tunisia that are doing a 24 hour hackathon right now, developing their first game on Unity. What what yep. kind of advice could you give them to to support them and what they are working on? Okay, you know, this is something I thought of something I thought about. So I don't know if the, my advice is good, but at least I've, you know, I've tried to make, I've, I've tried to come up with this over some years. Um, I, I mean, honestly, I think. Okay, so the good thing about kind of the globalization and the internet is that you know, if you're if you're good at something, you you know, that has you know a better chance of shining, right? So the the flip side is you have to be good at something. So. You know the problem is in in, 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 in in some fields, like my best friend is uh, you know he teaches kids right. In his field, you only have to be sort of top. You know, it's enough to be top seventy percent of the field, and you're fine. You'll be a good teacher, like or at least you'll survive. You get a career. You know, in in, in video games, you have to be top ten percent. Um, you know, in programming, it's probably enough to be top fifty percent. Um, so you know you you gotta find a way to become top ten percent of the game industry, which actually when you're starting out this young, it's not that hard. You just have to work a bit harder than the others, um, and be a little bit smart. But I guess everyone in this room is pretty smart. Um, 
yeah, you know, just just spend a lot of time building things, you know, tinker with Unity, tinker with other engines. You know, if, if you feel up for it, learn to make engines yourself. Learning like, you know, the, the more low-level programming it can be quite useful. Um, and just always be building something or tinkering with something. You know, picking projects that are just slightly harder than you can figure out is probably the optimal kind of pro project. Don't try to make, make like an, you know, MMO, you know, with big worlds because you will fail and just be kind of an, a, a painful experience. Um, so try to build things that are like manageable, but still kind of hard uh, and let kind of these projects guide you, I guess, and sort of, you know, the, the, the projects often teach you what you need to know uh, or tell you what you, you know, what you need to be learning. And, and that's kind of my, my best advice. Um, you know, I was, I was really lazy. I dropped out of university and so on, but I was never quite that kind of lazy because I was I was always learning something or programming or trying to figure out some some new ways of doing things, um, and that was my luck. <laughs> it, was, it was luck to drop out of university, or it was luck. To... Luck that I had that kind of drive, you know. You, you know, I had friends who dropped out of university and just did nothing, and that's kind of the wrong way of dropping out. I'm not saying telling you to drop out. Please don't do that, especially not this early. But but uh, but. You know, no matter whether you're in university or out or in, in school or outside of school, you know, you want to be kind of learning uh, continuously and, and just kind of struggling with projects and trying to pick up new technologies and so on. Um, and then whether you end up in games or some completely different field, like the time will not have been wasted. Okay, great. Uh, cool. Um, thank you so much for finding time for us. Uh, I'll, I'll leave the stage to you for your final words. Uh, but, but we do all very appreciate the fact that you jumped in so quick and, and we could learn a little bit more about your life as a founder of Unity and, and about you. what you did in the past. It's so cool, Alan. Thank you so much for inviting me. Just take kids, you know, kids, sorry to call you kids, like young adults, young people. <laughs> you know, build cool stuff and, you know, have fantastic luck in your careers and, and you know, whatever you do, I, I really hope you succeed. Yeah? Uh, yeah awesome. Just, you know, seriously, I, I really wish you luck from my, the bottom of my heart. <laughs> also, also with the next 24 hours, they, they'll be interesting and hard. Yeah, we will we'll definitely let you know what we were up to. Yes. Awesome. Hey, send me some notes on that, uh, Latin. And just, hey, I hope to catch up with you another time, yeah? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's time for that. I think that's cool. Hey, awesome. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.